Thanks for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, Tunisia's president cracks down on corruption after triggering a political crisis over the weekend with the firing of his premier and the suspension of parliament. Also, 4 billion euros are raised for getting girls around the world back to school at a London summit hosted by Kenya and the UK. And sounds ring out across the ages as young percussionists and performers from, the, from Ajara in Benin learn the rhythms of the instrument that has led the community to be dubbed the City of Drums. But first, Tunisia's powerful unions have said that they're pre preparing a roadmap out of the country's crisis that they plan on putting before President Kais Saeed. He fired the Prime Minister and suspended Parliament over the weekend, prompting accusations of a coup from the country's biggest political party. Now, he still hasn't said how he plans on managing the 30-day parliamentary freeze, and the U.S. has urged Saeed to return to Tunisia's democratic path. Saeed's supporters see his intervention as a welcome reset after years of stagnation. Wasim Kone tells us more. More housekeeping here today in Tunisia. The president, after singling out 460 people late last night of looting the country after firing the head of the national television broadcasting company, today he fired the head of special operations for the country. We don't know exactly why he did that, but in the past few days, the president, Qais Saeed, has been getting rid of anyone with allegations of corruption, mismanagement, or embezzlement. Earlier today, we were able to go to the UGT, the headquarters of the UGT, the all-powerful, all-influential trade union here in Tunisia, which represents workers and laborers. Uh, one of our colleagues here at France 24 in Arabic was able to speak to one of their representatives, and the few important points were raised. First of all, they say they believe that Kais Saeed's shock decision, shock actions on Sunday to freeze parliament and fire the prime minister, they say they believe that those actions were constitutional. Secondly, they, want, they say they want him to appoint a prime minister who will pledge to work for the people, who is free from corruption and, again, who has not been tainted by any allegations of corruption or mismanagement. And third, the UGTT is also working on a roadmap to improve the economic and social situation in the country and a roadmap that will also attempt to review the political system. They say they hope to work with the next government to try to implement some of those measures. Now, when will that next government arrive? Well, the word on the street here is that the president will appoint a new prime minister by the end of this week. We've seen Kone there for us. Now, six French soldiers were detained at Bata Airport in Equatorial Guinea on Thursday morning. The group had stopped to refuel and aviation authorities accused them of having done so without permission. It's branded the landing as a direct provocation and an assault on national security. The incident comes a day after a French decision to uphold the money laundering conviction of Equatorial Guinea's vice president, Theodorin Obiang, was accused of having laundered around 150 million euros of public money in France. Another 60 million coronavirus vaccine doses will be made available to Africa under the World Health Organization's COVAX scheme between now and September. It's a welcome boost to the continent's immunization efforts as it lags behind drives in higher income regions. But the extra stock is still far from enough. The head of Africa, CDC, it's said that at least 1.6 billion doses are needed to vaccinate 60% of people on the continent by the end of next year. And the FBI has branded a Nigerian influencer as one of the most high-profile money launderers in the world. Ramon Abbas, better known as Hush Puppies, to his 2.5 million followers on Instagram, to whom he posted images of his lavish lifestyle, has pled guilty to the charges in a U.S. court. He's accused of having cost his multiple victims around $24 million the series of fraudulent schemes. Now, a record-breaking amount of cash has been raised at a summit in London hosted by Kenya and the UK. The over 3 billion euros donated will go to boosting girls' access to education. Ms. fears that millions who stayed at home during the pandemic will not be returning to class. Kami Nediek tells us more. During the pandemic, home became school, as almost 300 million students across Africa saw their schools shuttered because of the pandemic. But an estimated 24 million students are at risk of never going back to the classroom, many of them girls. 
In a joint summit in London, the UK and Kenya raised over 3 billion euros to boost education around the world and reverse the damage of the pandemic. I have no doubt that this summit will go down in history as a watershed moment, a moment when nations came together to avert an education catastrophe that was, would have set us back significantly all the gains that we have made over the past decades. The funds will enable 40 million more girls to go to school for at least 12 years and 20 million more to be literate by the age of 10. According to the World Bank, women with secondary education go on to earn almost twice as much as those with none at all. And female education also drives economic development. But in sub-Saharan Africa, only 40% of girls complete lower secondary school. We cannot achieve development and growth as a society without the educational environment of 50% of our population. The initiative is being billed as the biggest boost to children's education in history, and an extra 800 million euros will be raised over the next five years. Nearly 40,000 hectares of forest are lost in Senegal every year because of drought. And with the onset of climate change, the loss across the Sahel is just expected to get worse. Well, engineers and conservationists have been trying to create a belt of green to slow down the sand's advance. Barry de Camp tells us more. Just like an oasis in the middle of the desert, circular gardens like this one are sprouting up across Senegal. Known as Tulu Kerr, they can trap water underground in places where resources are scarce while improving biodiversity and food security. The gardens are part of Africa's Green Wall Initiative, a multi-billion dollar project to plant a 5,000-mile belt of trees from Senegal to Djibouti, acting as a bulwark against the desert. The project, however, has been a source of controversy in the African continent. Only 4% of the 247 million acres that were promised have been planted. Now, scientists believe the gardens could be the answer, as they provide a source of food and income to locals who will have a vested interest in protecting their crops. This in a region marred by violence and instability. Hey, but the desert is gaining ground rapidly. Since the launch earlier this year, at least one garden has been destroyed, while several others have been successful. And finally, the Beninese city of Ajara is renowned for its drum makers. The sounds of the instruments continue to reach out across generations, with both the playing of and dancing to time-honored rhythms still inspiring young percussionists and dancers. Our correspondents report. Here, in the southeast of Benin, in Ejara, the practice of percussion and dance is passed down from an early age. Despite never attending a formal conservatory, the children's talent is clear. Among them is Joanita. At just 11, she's already the star of the Pepitox Ensemble. She's a child prodigy. She learns very quickly. What I teach the others in an hour, she learns in 20 to 25 minutes. Today, Pidi Synth attends rehearsal. The famous Beninese traditional musician has been playing drums since he was four. She's a young girl who impresses me with her movements, with the exactness of her work, the precision. La précision. Joanita and all the Pepitots have the privilege of playing drums crafted by some of the best artisans in the world. One particular clan is renowned for their drum making skills. 
Ajara is called the city of drums, and the songs and the spirit of the drum are apparent everywhere here. Young musicians come to soak up the secret knowledge of the four bears. C'est un tambour qui date de plus de deux siècles. Et jusqu'à nos jours, on continue toujours pas à jouer ce tambour dans les forêts sacrées. Si on retourne if we go back to the history of this drum, we can fully enjoy the songs and the dances attached to it. The young artists still have a lot to learn, but still, at every show, the audience is bewitched by the energy of the performance as they breathe fresh life into traditional rhythms. Well, the audience isn't the only one bewitched. That was amazing. Well, that is, though, all we have time for on Eye on Africa. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Take care.